Hi friends and family. Hey, this video is about December 7th. December 7th, uh, we started out in, um, what, at the Dead Sea, right? And got up in the morning, had our breakfast, and drove off to Mount Nebo. Uh, and so as we drove, it, it was interesting. You could see this mist coming up off of the, the desert. and You could see you know, the Bedouin tents and places. Um, and, and the lower lands, at, at lower altitudes, it was really arid. They had cut down all the trees. There was nothing there. Um, but at higher altitudes, there were some trees, and that's where the towns were. And so we got up to Mount Nebo. Can I stop a minute and sure. say, uh, do we have something about the Bedouins? Not very much. Do you want to say something about them? Oh, I was just going to say that the guide said they're parking on, their tents are on national land. And also that in 1965, the former king realized that Bedouins would destroy the land of Jordan if they continued to live off of it. And 65% of the population of Jordan was Bedouins at the time who were nomadic. And so uh, he created villages, provided schools for them, and their uh, literacy rate went from you remember? It was around 30% in, yeah. in 1965, I think, to... 90-something percent. Now. Mm -hmm. Now. Right. Uh, so, and in fact, one of the guides that's part of the oat group is a, a Bedouin descent. Right. So they've so, been tremendous. Yeah. Uh, change in, in the population in the last 50 years. Yes, and they said only 1% of the population is now Bedouin. We're, we're, we're going to visit some Bedouins. Yeah, uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, where are we? Well, Mount Nebo was crowded. Yeah, so we went to a, a craft center, and mm -hmm. it was a center that was set up and partly funded by who? Queen Noor. Right. Queen Noor was the last queen of the former king, and she was an American. Um, and she was his fourth wife, although the other wives were not alive at the time. She was his only wife when she was uh, there and was queen. But our guide said she was very popular because she did a lot of work with NGOs and helped women and people in the countryside um, with gaining skills. And that was part of this NGO that her foundation helped to support is uh, this craft shop. Do you want to talk a little bit about it, Jeff? Just very briefly that, that uh, she set up various craft industries so that Bedouins could, as they left the nomadic life, could take up a craft and a trade uh, that would support them. And she was particularly uh, anxious to support women in this. Mm -hmm. This particular center is uh, outside, between Mount Nebo and, and the town of Madaba. And Madaba, we'll visit later on in the day, is noted for its mosaics. And so one of the things that this trade center does is it trains people to do mosaic work mm -hmm. and also um, some carpet um, uh, Persian well not Persian carpets but a special type of carpet that uses camel hair mm -hmm. um, anyway so we visited that and we saw a video which I'll show you well matter of fact it's probably playing right now <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the very fine work that they do in, in, in making these mosaics where they 
they glue the tiles down. They, they, they cut the tiles and then they glue them down um, uh, using flour and water. Mm -hmm. and, and they do a process. It's, a, it's an indirect uh, mosaic system. And we won't go into the details of it. So we, we witnessed how they do this, and then we went in and spent money. <laughs> Beautiful stuff, interesting people. We were glad to do it, and the prices were fair. From there, we were able to go back to Mount Nebo because it, uh, the traffic there had let up a little bit, and and, and visited Mount Nebo. Mm -hmm. Why did we do that? Well, Mount Nebo is identified as the location where Moses, who is a prophet for actually uh, Muslims, Jewish people, and Christians, uh, Moses led the people out of Egypt and out of the slavery in Egypt into the promised land. But they wandered in the wilderness for, I think, like 40 years or something. Um, and Moses was told he would lead the people to the promised land, but would never be able to live there with him, them. And he, and at the end of his life, near the end of his life, climbed Mount Nebo, and from Mount Nebo could see out to the area that was the promised land for them. And um, that's the River Jordan area, basin area. And, um, and then he died. So he did not see it. And he charged Joshua to keep people going to the promised land. Right. And so they, they, it's, it's an important Christian holy site. And I would imagine an important holy site for Muslims and, right. and, 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 and Jews as well. Right. And there's a, a church up there uh, that parts of it uh, were built in the sixth century. And there's beautiful mosaic floors underneath it that we were able to see. Mm -hmm. um, the, it was pretty amazing, the shape of the floors. Um, and I think this is the one where one of the stories is there were people who were destroying the store, the floors. Yeah, this is the iconoclast movement of the of the eighth century, um, and they were going around and destroying icons, yeah. hence being iconoclasts, mm -hmm. and uh, they they would deface anything with a face on it. And, and so they were destroying mosaic floors, mm -hmm. statuary, all sorts of things. So the priests um, put dirt, sand, over the mosaic tiles and then put another layer, layer of mosaic tile over it that was just designs. So the surprise of the people who were rebuilding, relooking at the church is that they found all these beautiful mosaics underneath the other mosaic floor that was just designed. So, yeah, it was very yeah. neat. Yeah, it was really neat. Um, then we went on to the town of Madaba, mm -hmm. and we visited the Church of St. George, which has a famous mosaic floor uh, that has essentially a tourist map of of, of the Holy Land during the time of uh, the Crusades, I think. Um, and as we went back to the bus to get onto it, we got some more pomegranate juice, freshly squeezed pomegranate juice. Yum, yum. It was delicious. A little sweeter than the last pomegranate juice I had. So maybe the pomegranates were more, were more ripe. I don't know. One of our reasons for going to Madaba, other than the mosaic, was that we were going to do a home visit there. And with these home visits, we broke into groups of seven, and each group of seven went and visited a, a family. 
all the families that we visited in the Daba um, were Christian families, which is interesting. And uh, Christians make up about 10% of the Jordanian population. The uh, part of the, the routine with the, the visits is to have lunch. And so the house that I visited had uh, the, the father there was a pharmacist, recently retired, and the wife had been trained as an archaeologist and now kind of does part-time artwork. Um, and they have two children, a boy and a girl. The girl's a senior in high school and getting ready to go to college and wants to go overseas. And the family is totally supportive of her being able to do that. With the, the meal that we had was a great big platter, a, a big dish, shallow bowl, heaped with rice um, and, and some vegetables and chicken. It had some, it had been cooked in spices. And then when we put it on our plate, we, we also put some yogurt down on the plate with it. And there was some tomato-based sauce that I don't know what it was that I, I put on it. And there, there was a bowl of hot little red chili, mashed up chili peppers that I put some of that on. That was nice and hot. I'm going to get something in a minute while you keep talking. Okay. Um, and um, Tara, I just want to make sure that you um, don't walk in front of that. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And uh, um, anyways, uh, we also had what they called an Arabic salad and some olives. It was a very nice meal. Uh, at the end of it, we had some chocolates that she had made up, and a little later on, we had had some alcohol that he'd made up. So it was um, it, it, it was it was a fun and lively and informative meal. You went to a different house. I did. Can you tell me about it? Sure. Uh, the father was the accountant. The mother didn't work. Didn't have a profession. They had two children, a son who was also a senior and wanted to study abroad, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and Jim at Eastern had students from Jordan. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, we also asked him if he felt that um, he was uh, not accepted because of being Christian in uh, the, this Muslim nation. And he said, well, it's not overt, but there's all kinds of things on social media that uh, happen and are uncomfortable. So that was kind of interesting. Um, they all have smartphones, so uh, there we go. Right. Uh, um, oh, can I interrupt for just a second? Our house was all decorated with Christmas things, okay? They had a Christmas tree mm -hmm. and all sorts of ornaments. And, and they said that, yeah, the Muslims come over and help them celebrate Christmas, and they they, they do Hanukkah with their Jewish friends and mm -hmm. so forth. So in, in, in the family that I visited, there seemed to be a lot of uh, interfaith interactions. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sorry I interrupted you, but... It yeah. Was, uh, our guide said the same thing about his neighborhood, uh, which is interesting that you're saying, mm -hmm. but didn't seem so much in this home. Um, so we had a dish that was uh, chicken on the bottom, and then they, they it was in a big pot, and they cooked the chicken really, uh, they, they browned the chicken, then they put vegetables in on top, and then they put, uh, they cook it for a, a little while, and then they put rice in and um, cook it. And then very carefully, she brought it to the table and turned it upside down onto a serving platter. And it was very pretty. I have a picture of it, it was pretty interesting. Um, and they use something in it called seven spices. And that's a standard spice in 
Jordan. And seven, the seven spices are black ginger, black pepper, ginger, bay leaves, cardamom, cinnamon, coriander, and cloves. Uh, but it is delicious. And I bought some that her sister makes the seven spice mix, uh, it, her own version of it. And I did buy a little bit to try some at home. And then we just had a, a, simple, a plain salad with cucumber and let, tomatoes, which is typical in a little lettuce, but it was in fresh lemon, fresh squeezed lemon juice and olive oil and dried mint. And that was the salad dressing and it was really delicious. Mm -hmm. And homemade cookies that she had made. So, Great. That was it. It was fun. After lunch, we got on the road to go to Petra. So we were moving from the Dead Sea down to Petra. And it was about a three and a half hour drive, which was a long ways from my bladder. And so um, thankfully, about halfway through that trip, we're, we're going to stop at a truck stop. Along the way, um, going across this very flat desert as we moved uh, through southern Jordan. Um, there were these huge piles of dirt, and it turns out that these are mining tailings from phosphate. That It's a big extractive in, uh, industry there. Um, it, another interesting thing that's kind of related to that is alongside this road ran it in a narrow gauge railroad. It's the same narrow gauge railroad that T. E. Lawrence was attacking um, in Lawrence of Arabia before there was a highway and power mm -hmm. lines and everything. And was he attacking the Ottomans? Yeah, he was attacking mm -hmm. the Ottomans. And, and they still use this, and they still use steam locomotives, and they use this to carry out the phosphate that they're, they're shipping out. Um, when we got to the truck stop where we stopped to use the bathroom, um, I, I went into the bathroom and I noticed kind of in the back area of it, there were all these, these seats, um, kind of pedestals and, and faucets and things. And I ended up asking our, our guide about it. And he says, oh yeah, that's where they go and they wash their feet and so forth before they go in and pray. So um, a lot of truck drivers and people on that road, there's a there's a, an area set up in the truck stop for them to, to, to do their, their prayers. Mm -hmm. um, there was also a truck strike uh, because the price of gas had gone up there was uh, some kind of tax that was added by the government, um, yeah. which our driver said he felt the taxes in Jordan were relatively high and they didn't get some of the services that they should get and corruption is a problem in Jordan. So, and he gave a few examples. So that's not a good thing. Yeah, I, I think to elaborate on that just a little bit, my recollection is is that Saudi Arabia had given them a preferred status on on gas gasoline, and they cut that off. And so, as a consequence, and probably increased taxes as well, the cost of gasoline had gone from two dollars to six dollars a gallon. Ah, uh, that that doesn't seem quite right to me, Jim. That it was that much of a difference. Okay, uh, but it did go up. Oh. Well, I don't have it firmly in my head. Yeah. Okay. Um, this 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 truck stop also had all sorts of shopping, but thankfully we didn't have to do much because we'd already spent a lot of money. <laughs> and. Anyways, we, we continued on and got into Petra. Um, as, as my note says, as the sun set and the moon rose. Pretty nice. That's the end. Love you. Yes. Bye. Bye.